Hi, I'm Melissa Ellis, and this is my journey to PA school. Hi everyone, Anthony Gothier here for your journey to PA school. I'm so excited to have with me today for an interview, Melissa Ellis. Hi. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Now I'm really excited because she just recently was accepted into PA school and so I want to hear her story because it's really unique and exciting and I'm glad she's here to share it with everyone. So Melissa, when did you realize you wanted to become a PA? I realized I wanted to be a PA when I was a clinical research coordinator. Um, I was working with, I guess they call them subjects, but what was sad to me is that by the time these subjects or patients had gotten to us, I had felt like they didn't have enough preventative health care and they were just taking medications and it was not too late in a sense, but it, it could have been prevented mm -hmm. and um, I started looking into PA and I just felt like that was what was right for me because I wanted to help patients before they had to get to the point of having to get these diseases and I've always loved medicine and I've loved education and preventative care so I felt like it was just a really nice care and mix for me. Yeah that's really exciting now for that research position was that kind of your first job in the medical field? Um, no my first job in the medical field I was a medical scribe and a translator because I speak Farsi okay. so I would translate for the doctors and the techs at an eye surgeon's office in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And that was my first hands-on experience. Um, being a medical scribe really helped me get a feel of like, I knew I wanted to be a provider. I didn't know how or what adapted to me and my lifestyle the best, but once I was a clinical research coordinator, I knew. Yeah, a lot of people ask me, they ask if, uh, is medical scribe a good job? I, I think it's great. Yeah. You get to learn so much about the healthcare field. You learn how to formulate and type up the notes, which is really important and helpful as yeah. your PA. Uh, what's something you found really beneficial when you're a medical scribe? What I thought was really cool is that it depends what kind of office it is, but most likely sometimes the patients are similar in terms of what they're coming in for. So the repetitiveness in a sense helps because in your head, like the doctor is speaking to the patient and the dialogue in your head becomes the same. Mm -hmm. So even before the patient says, like the patient will say what's wrong with them, in your head you have an idea, oh maybe I think it's this. So it starts to internally, you start to practice like wow, I could feel it, I could see that, I could feel it and I could see that I can be a provider, I want to be on that end. No, that's great. And that's got to be so motivating, yeah. too, when you actually start kind of formulating the diagnoses or you start seeing physical exam uh, methods and you're like, oh, I know why they're doing this and what this shows. And, yeah. and that's definitely very motivating. Yeah. So is this while you're an undergrad or was this afterwards when you're working in the medical field? While I was an undergrad, um, I was an undergrad at UCLA and I was working at the eye surgeon's office there for two years. And then after I graduated UCLA, um, I was in research for a year and a half. Okay, so you took your gap year? Yeah, I did my gap year. Um, I also volunteered at Cedar sinai in the PACU unit. That was really nice to see because it's like recovery, but so it's slow, but if something, God forbid, goes wrong, it becomes really fast. Right. So that was nice to see a hospital. Experience. Yeah, it was good that you had that inpatient experience yeah. as well as the outpatient because you got to see how the medical team works yeah. together, how everyone's working for the common goal of yeah. helping the patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's got to be really exciting too. I know from my own personal experience, anytime I got to do anything hands-on in the medical field, it just kind of sparked the, the fire even more and helped it burn even brighter. Yeah. During your gap year, like right before you apply to PA school, what other things were you doing? Were you already like working on your personal statement? Were you shadowing more PAs? What were some of the things that helped you kind of prepare better for okay. applying to PA school? Also, when I was in the eye surgeon's office, I knew I wanted to go into medicine. I couldn't really put my hand on what. Mm -hmm. So I started preparing because I knew you had to start from ahead of time. So um, at UCLA, I was a SOS major and my minor was in disability studies. So my minor, um, I taught piano, my internship for two years was that I taught piano to disabled and able-bodied children because I knew um, like some of the children were autistic and that was like a cognitive end of it. Mm -hmm. So everything I did, it was not only just hands-on medical in a sense experience, but I wanted to just become, I wanted to become well-grounded for myself and I wanted to understand different cultures and backgrounds. 
So I did, that was one of the first things that I really loved to see, to work with kids. I knew I wanted to maybe go into peds because of that. Right. And then um, I volunteered at the hospital. I did a bunch of different volunteer things. I, I would go help out at homeless shelters. Um, I played basketball as a kid, so I taught kids basketball as a basketball coach. But in terms of medicine, it was the research and the medical scribe. But what I like too, that I know you say this too, is that you kind of have to see yourself as not only like a textbook or a GPA or a personal statement, that your experience is also really heavy. So you have to show your personality in terms of like, I feel like schools and your patients want to see who and what you are. And they want to see that you're empathetic and that you can relate to many different backgrounds and cultures and different types of... Right, you bring up an excellent point. So many people reach out to me and they say, well, I, I'm not able to volunteer at the hospital because the local hospital is not accepting volunteers or this medical office isn't accepting shadowing or volunteers. But there's so much more to you to be a successful candidate and applicant as a yeah. PA than just where you volunteered or worked in the medical field. Like you said, that's just a testament to how amazing your background is doing the piano to the, the children and all these variety of things that really kind of lay the foundation and help you. Like you said, now when you're doing your peds rotation, you're going to have a better understanding of kids with certain backgrounds or disabilities or different cognitive aspects. Yeah. So that's really exciting. So you're doing all these great things and, and you're working towards your goal of becoming a PA. But what were some of the things that kind of helped you formulate your personal statement? I know a lot of people have a difficult time. They get stuck. They have writer's block when trying to yeah. write their personal statement. What were some of the things that you did to kind of help you get past that point? First thing I did was, Caswell, when you start, you know this, you get super overwhelmed. So mm -hmm. I would like, I knew I wanted a whole week just to brainstorm on my personal statement. And I started to like try to think and I'm like, oh my God, my statement, I don't, I know it's going to sound like so many other people's, but I don't want it to. So three things I thought of. One was, how can I be myself? Two, how can my personality shine? And three, but like, how do I stay professional mm -hmm. with all three of it? Right. So I just thought of different stories and ideas of things that happened to me, whether I impacted someone, I felt like I impacted someone, or I felt like someone impacted me. So it's kind of like a story. Right. You're, it's your own... It's your own movie and you're the star. So. <laughs> exactly. So You just, really need to take the time to show the positive aspects of yes. who you are, maybe something unique that they won't get out of your CASPA application. Yeah. But I think having a story or central themes and kind of bringing it full circle yeah. uh, really highlights the positive aspects of you. One thing I would really recommend is that so many people are scared to be themselves. Mm -hmm. in, in general, I think it's hard that you're especially when you're applying to school you're like okay how can i be who they want me to be mm -hmm. which i can understand that but at the end of the day they are actually trying to see who and what you are not who you, who they want you to be so like i would say don't be scared to be yourself don't be scared to show your personality don't be scared to show even if it what didn't have to do with medicine it showed your strengths so it, it like if it had to involve with kids or like the underserved population or homeless is whatever you feel like something that you realized who and what you were within that moment share a story about yourself excellent tips that's great advice so many people write in a manner where they're writing what they think the readers want to hear sure, and yeah. read and they're using these keywords and buzzwords that they read online when researching the pa profession yeah. and it's so much more than that you need to really kind of personalize it like you said and just yeah. write you know what comes from the heart and kind of truly shows who you are as a person and i think it makes it easier to write because it's i don't want to say that it's not fake but it's just you mm -hmm. you know if someone asks you about you how easy is it for you just to go <laughs> yeah, exactly but when you start it's hard but once you're flowing you know you flow <laughs> so you get everything in and you have everything dialed in and it's time to submit the caspa application to the schools yes how nerve-wracking was it when you're about to click that button to submit <laughs> Best feeling. <laughs> the best, best feeling. feeling ever. Yeah. That was the best feeling. Best feeling ever. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, like anxiousness and uh, yeah. nervousness. What? And... What? I had a friend actually tell me that she was a PA. She told me, "What can help motivate you is like, let's say your favorite meal or a trip that you're looking forward to, or even a pair of shoes, something you really want." She's like, "Save it for the day that you're gonna <laughs> submit your app, so that way, like, while you're working on the app too, you have an angle that you get to treat yourself because." We're so hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. You never sit back to be like, wow, 
look, you're always constantly trying to say, I want to become better, better, better. But you never stop to say like, wow, I made it this far. Mm -hmm. Even to whether you're going to get in, not get in, get waitlisted, submitting that application, as you know, was hard enough. Exactly. So treat yourself that day. <laughs> yeah, that's a great tip. I agree. You don't realize how much work and effort goes yeah. into its personal statement, getting your letters of rec, yeah. getting everything inserted properly with no mistakes to submit. So I think that's a, a great yeah. idea to treat yourself. You know, submit. Now let's go do something fun or let's go buy something exciting that you've been <laughs> wanting for a long time. Mm -hmm. All right. So, <laughs> very cool. So you submit and then it's the waiting game, which is always oh, like the hardest, the hardest part for so many people. So uh, you're waiting things out. How did you feel when you got that first interview invite? Oh my God, that was like the the process of just waiting for an interview mm -hmm. is it's bittersweet. You're excited that you finish your app, but then you're like, oh my God, what are they going to think of me? When you get the interview, when I got the interview, at least, I don't know how it is for everyone. I felt so, I felt so confident. Okay. Because I'm like, okay, I got it because I'm a very, I'm very in person. I'm a very one-on-one -on -one type of person mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I can, I'm well, I work well under pressure. So I knew that once I get to the interview, I'll be okay. So when I got the interview, I was just, I was like, I had a lot of confidence and I knew I was going to be okay. Okay. Did you do anything in particular to prepare? Did you do like mock interviews with people or read through practice questions? Yeah. So what I did to help me for the interviews was I did mock interviews. Mm -hmm. um, I would either call my friends, have my friends in front of me. And then at the end, like the last week, I would do it in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So what I did that helped me the most was I came up with different stories in my head. Because if you think about it, these stories you can use, you don't know what they're going to ask you. Right. Even if you think you know what they're going to ask, mm -hmm. you don't know what they're going to ask. So I would just come up with different stories. So that way I knew what my strengths were. I knew what my weaknesses were. And like I could elaborate on it and however mm -hmm. they asked. So certain, um, like how I was saying in the personal statement too, you know, certain stories of like who you impacted or they impacted you. And it made you who you are in a sense. It brought you towards this career. So... That's what helped me a lot. Well, that's a great tip. So many people focus on, okay, if they ask me this question, I'm going to answer it this way. And it's impossible, like you said, to know what they're going to ask you, let alone think of all the answers for every different question. So it's great to kind of have two or three scenarios, stories, experiences that you can kind of tailor towards certain ways they ask you a question. Yeah. So you know they're going to ask certain types of questions and you just kind of have these stories in your back pocket. So if they ask it a certain way, you know, oh, I have this experience that could answer that question really well. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. how many uh, programs did you get to interview at? I actually interviewed the first year at Davis. I got waitlisted at Davis. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a very unique story, <laughs> actually. So the first year, I only got an interview at Davis, and I got waitlisted at Davis. Okay. Then the second year, when I was in when I was applying, I was just like, I want Davis or nothing. Mm -hmm. So I put my eggs all in one basket. And the second year I applied to Davis and the second year I got in and within um, that gap year, that was when I was, I, I was already doing the research, but I became a lot more full time and hands on. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was weird. I just knew I was going to, I don't want to say like, oh, I just knew I was going to get in, but I felt like I was more, because I was more ready to mm -hmm. get in, I just knew I was going to get in. I felt like my application was like was stronger and like mentally I just had a lot more clarity that that profession was for me and it was where I wanted to be the year prior I wanted it but it's funny sometimes when you get rejected to something you realize how much more you want it mm -hmm. so no I think that's that's great you're gonna learn from your experiences and that's one of the great things that I'm sure the PA program saw in you is that hey you might not have been accepted that year but you researched, figured out what things you can improve upon, you yeah. improve upon those, and that's why you kind of had a better understanding, you felt a little more confident because you've gone through it before. Yeah. And so that's really great. And I think they like, schools do like, I, I've heard at least, because I know so many people, I know a handful of people have gone in their second time, and I feel like schools do like when you're persistent. Mm -hmm. They like that they know you want it and you go out there. Oh, yeah. Your... They want to make sure that you're 100% committed and yeah. determined on your goal of becoming a PA. Not that this is a fallback because you don't want to do med school yeah. or maybe it's a fallback because of something else and you just want to get in ASAP or you want to get in as soon as possible. But they want to make sure you're 100% committed 
and that PA is the route for you because they're going to put a lot of time and effort to educate you and they want to make sure once you graduate you're going to go forth and be a great PA to represent their program and the PA profession. So, true. Yeah. I like to finish off each interview with a segment called Drop Some Knowledge. Mm -hmm. So thinking back, what's one key piece of advice you'd like to give to aspiring PAs out there? One, no one, no one told me this and it's sad that I just didn't know it, but I didn't believe in myself mm -hmm. enough. And like, <clears throat> I would hear outside noise, I would ask so many people for their opinion and for advice. And there's a difference between listening to someone's advice and just and taking it. And I feel like I, I didn't believe in myself and I wish I had took a lot of people's advice with the, with the like as a grain of salt mm -hmm. because so many people would be like, oh my God, you're applying a second time. You should just give up. It's oh. getting harder. It's getting harder. You should just go do another profession within the field of medicine. And you know, like it starts to get to you. It starts to get to your confidence and they tried it. A lot of people tried to intimidate me. Mm -hmm. They really would like... Oh, you're a SOS major. How are you gonna get in? Or you're set. You're gonna apply a second time. You're really gonna do that. So many people would try to discourage me from doing it. And there was days that it was so hard to get myself back up to even apply a second time, and have to think, wow, maybe the second time I won't even get in. And then finally, I just had a breakthrough that I'm like, you know what? I know who I am. I know what I'm capable of doing. They don't. They don't know who I am. And at the end of the day, you know all of the answers. Like, as much as you can ask, it's so funny, because like we catch ourselves doing this in day-to-day -day lives, where you ask people for their advice, like five people, let's say, and at the end, you take your own advice, because <laughs> you know what you want and who you are. So I would say just don't get intimidated, and if you know why you're doing this, it'll take you through. Well, there you go. Excellent piece of advice. Stay true to yourself. Yes. Stay focused on your goal. Yes. And it's going to work out for you. Melissa, thank you very thank much you. for being thank here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.